Sword Online Progressive Scarts of Deep Night movie recently got released on Blu-ray in Japan and thus a lot more people got to watch it through legal or piracy means. <laughs> and suddenly I started seeing a lot of specific types of tweets filling up my timeline. Specifically complaining about the lighting effects in SAO having grown to such a point that it is obstructing the actual animation itself and by extension the general over-reliance on post-processing. So I figured I'd do a video I always wanted to do back during the days of Alicization anime. How much visual effects is too much visual effects? As the technology evolves, traditionally hand-drawn anime is becoming more and more filled with computer-generated effects and post-processing additions. Sword Online, being a mass cash cow, is no exception to this. The trend actually started back in Ornal Scale, which was a huge blockbuster movie. The push was understandable at that point, you know, shiny is shiny, made the blockbuster movie feel even more premium in addition to its overall great animation quality. The most important factor was that it did not particularly feel like it was overly relied on back then. We had the fancy VFX mainly used for very climactic moments like the final Starbar stream and otherwise it was generally limited to boss defeat effects of Ordinal Scale, although in hindsight maybe Ordinal Scale 2 would have pushed some wrong buttons if there was more to do in VR as the augmented reality aspect of the movie featured absolutely no sword skills to take advantage of such light effects in universe. So you know that is something to think about, Ornal Scale could have gone a completely different way with its VFX. But you know what? The best visual effects is the one you imagine in your own mind to your own liking based on extensive and colorful descriptions and this video is sponsored by my Amazon affiliate link for Sword Online Platinum Collector's Edition by Yempress. This is the absolute best way of reading all the animated and non-animated SAO stories up until the end of Moon Cradle, so a total of 20 SAO books combined with two gorgeous large hardcover books featuring huge illustrations, much larger than what you'd get in a typical light novel form, 20 mini posters made out of individual volume covers and a large poster featuring an illustration by Abeshi. I just checked the Amazon US listing and there's a much bigger discount than usual at the moment as well so this was a perfect chance to plug this one in so you probably wouldn't want to miss it. If you want more information on the entire bundle, because it's it's a large thing, you know, it's it's better to inform yourself, including some downsides that I probably should not mention in the short self-plug here, I also have a separate video on my channel in the form of an unboxing that's gonna be linked in the description alongside the Amazon link. So, where was I again? Ah, uh, yes, I was just done with Ornal Scale. No, I barely said anything about Ornal Scale, literally a single paragraph in my script over here, but there is a lot to talk about as to what comes next. Elicization. Elicization tried to continue using the more detailed art style of Ornal Scale, but as a weekly rolling production. There is indeed a lot to say about the production disasters of Elicization, and if you've been a long time subscriber of the channel, you know a lot of it already through my Elicization Explained videos. You know, based on what little I know of animation, along with what we kept hearing about the production in general, it was a basic deduction anyone could do if they had bare minimum understanding of what we call project management and trade-offs. Oversimplified if you have a more detailed art style and constant issues with staff being stretched thin, what you end up with is good and crisp static shots, yes, however, incredibly lacking polish when it comes to dynamic stuff that require a bit more than 3-4 frames of mouth and eye movement on screen, jokes and elicization, even their still shots suffer to no end, but that's, that's not the topic of this video. The topic is specifically the dynamic shots and how the overall production over relied on post-processing to, um, I'll, I'll say it bluntly due to lack of a better word, so excuse the harsh choice of wording here, over relied on post-processing to salvage the lack of polish in animation or lack of animation in general. No denying Kentaro Waki was one of the rare people who really carried Elization anime. He was the main person who was in charge of the post-processing, compositing, all that kind of stuff, alongside other individuals like Yoshiro Kanno and Tetsuya Takeuchi on the animation side are heroes for most standout action scenes in the entire Elization saga, who regularly disappeared as they were also working on other projects. <laughs> However, that huge praise, it's the type of praise towards 
a single standout staff member, that kinda ends up being a massive criticism to an overall production. I mentioned how Kanno and Takeuchi disappeared quite often and this was truly felt when they did. It's the reason why a lot of, let's say, quote unquote, more involved people started to scratch their heads following the Ugachi and Goblin spite on episode 4, as the quality of animation started to dip, only to slowly receive confirmations of production issues and staff leaving in the background in the following weeks. And that Ugachi fight ended up becoming one of the rare good fights of the Human Empire sub arc of realization. Following that, I started to raise some concerns about the use of VFX when he started ascending the central cathedral with the Dusselbert fight, although back then I, I could not put my finger on it properly, you know, I'm not an animator, I'm not a professional from the industry, I don't go ahead and study the art in detail, I just I just study the events and compare them to the light novels, that's, that's what I do. Yet we're generally capable enough to recognize certain patterns unconsciously, thus can get a sense of, huh, something feels off about this. It was the next couple of episodes that made me slowly realize as we headed into the Hall of Ghostly whatever on floor 50 and started facing Fana or yes, I was too lazy to check back into the books for the full name of the hall. Again, I have issues on the animation side as well, like the one time they tried a very dynamic shot for a single cut, it ended up being extremely choppy, but it also started to become clear that the VFX, it is, it is becoming a bit too much. But it all became extremely clear during the fight between Kirito and Chudelkin, the first time Kirito used incarnation intense enough to materialize the Black Worm coat using Warpal Strike. I realized... Well, I, I, frankly, I realized that I simply could not see anything as to what the fuck was going on on screen because of all those incarnation effects. I mean, sure, part of that I am willing to let slide, I'll, I'll give it to the lacking bitrate until the release of the Blu-ray, but the amount the red aura obstructed literally the entire screen, so much so that a huge amount of people didn't even realize Kirito's outfit was incarnated into the Black Worm coat, it really says a lot as to how excessive it was. And when I realized what was happening at that point, the excessive use of VFX, it kinda started to become a common complaint because now I was properly aware of it. It felt like they knew their animation did not hold up and that they were cutting a lot of corners to be able to make the production work, that they were doing all they could and then were sending it over to Waki to just do his thing, which frankly he did. He he did make it work, but the reality remains as to how much of what we were watching was actual underlying animation and how much of it was the VFX layers that were layered on top of the actual animation. And again, I want to make it clear that post-processing, it's, it's not a bad thing at all, but it still is just one of the aspects of the overall product and with realization there were times where it felt like it was all the product. It's a tool that should be primarily be enhancing what lies underneath, work in tandem, not, not be the thing that salvages it into a presentable state by hiding all of it. That's how it felt like in Elsation. It felt like a lot of corners were being cut and all of it was being hidden behind the VFX layer so you wouldn't notice. This continued into the War of Underworld half of Elsation 2 in much greater effect of course due to War of Underworld just being much larger in scale and usages of combat, so much so that in climactic moments things were barely visible and generally blended behind a lot of layers of light, dust, aura and other things. How are there even more things? There's a reason why Renly's fight against the Goblin Chief stands out so much. There's there's a lot of post-processing still, it, it's just the way Elsation Project was designed, but the animation is not hidden behind 50 separate layers of VFX. Even in the incredible Berkuli vs Vecta fights, there were a lot of moments where VFX felt a little too obstructive. I find it ironic that I was back then branded a light novel elitist because everyone felt in love with the shiny effects, which uh, let's be real, that's a completely separate complaint that doesn't have anything to do with the adaptation quality to begin with. And now, less than half a decade later, the novelty of the shininess is wearing off for people and they are starting to complain about how much of the screen real estate is being taken over simply by shiny light. 
ruining their attempts at taking cool screenshots. <laughs> Remember that, I'll get back to that topic in a second. That was a lot of words just on Alsatian, I know. So, what's going on with the progressive movies and why are people suddenly, quote unquote, waking up in light of the creeping VFX? Well, for starters, Kentaro Waki is a huge name and huge names are generally harder to criticize, not just because of the oh, they're a legend and you don't get to criticize them effect, but also because, well, they are legends for a reason. They do know very well as to what they are doing, leading to phenomenal work even in suboptimal situations, like having to hide the entire screen behind VFX. And well, Kentaro Waki is not working on the progressive movies. Oshima Yuki was more of a prodigy of Waki as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, fellow staff enthusiasts in the comments. Chances are, you indeed do know better than me, and Yuki was the main person in charge of things in progressive movies that Waki was handling previously. By default, she's already much more criticizable than Waki is, due to the sheer nature of, well, not being THE Kentaro Waki. But on the flip side, I don't really think it's really her work that's being criticized per se, but the way progressive movies inherently decide to rely heavily on the shiny, that is kind of the problem here. And maybe that's why I don't quite agree with people complaining about the post-processing in progressive movies, and that's why I talked so much about the case in Elicization. Back then, it felt like when VFX was being used, the intensity was being pushed to 11 in order to hide the lacking animation side, whereas in progressive, it doesn't feel that way to me. It simply feels like the scenes were built with a lot of shiny in mind, and shiny they were as intended. You understand where that difference lies, right? It's, it's why I mentioned the screenshotability factor before. You see, I have not heard a single complaint about the VFX of Arrival Starless Night for over half a year before the movie released based on trailers, and heard zero complaints about it until the Blu-ray came out almost a year after the theatrical release. Similarly, for Scares of Deep Night, there was never a complaint about the VFX until this week at the time of this script was being written, when the Blu-ray came out. Countless people watched it in theaters, some people numerous times with no complaints at all regarding the VFX, because not a single one felt like the VFX was preventing them from watching the animation itself. It felt like a natural part of the composition, as it should in my opinion. I mean, sure, the darker color palette of Carluin and its surrounding settings in Scherzo, it, it does make the brightness stand out a bit more than usual. Yet it wasn't like people had any complaints when watching the theatrical release of Scherzo either. But the moment people were able to start taking screenshots of moments they remember to be epic, well, unsurprisingly, people were greeted by large slabs of light or particle effects blocking their screenshots. And when that happened, people decided to complain, the same way people ridiculed smear frames in hand-drawn animation or squash and stretch in 3D animation when they get the chance, or you know, just a funny still frame of an actor's face in live action. It's it, it's really as simple as that in my opinion. I, I, I won't lie, I too prefer the clean and crisp look of Yuki vs Asuna fight from Mother Rosario, but I don't really have an issue with a scene featuring too much VFX under quotes that prevents me from taking a clean screenshot. I, I feel like that's fine. It's it's not meant to be. It's not supposed to be a still screenshot that's isolated from its context. It's animation. It's a composition that is supposed to be moving. You know, a composition can feel lacking if you remove any of its layers. And the fact of the matter is, the 24 frames per second of a cut is it's also part of that complete package of a composition. If you take a single frame to complain about an aspect, you're taking things out of context to create a problem where it's not a problem in the overall composition, in my opinion. And also, if you're watching illegally on shitty pirate websites, that's 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 also part of your problem. Do yourself and everyone a favor and stop watching shitty encoding with shitty compression with shitty bitrate on shitty websites. 
And no, proud pirate, I see you, the one with full HD Dolby 5.1 Blu-ray rip download person. If your download is 2 gigabytes tops, then you're in <laughs> not a better position than those trying to move past the pop-up ads just to watch a blurry soup. You too are watching a blurry soup. All in all, as all things are with all kinds of art forms, when it comes to the usage of post-processing and VFX, it is the same, it depends on the intent. Sure, there can be mistakes or bad calls or bad works in general and I'd keep that on a different side, but you can't just take an entire dimension away and show a screenshot to judge what's supposed to be a moving image and I don't think the progressive movies did anything particularly worse as a project than Elicization did in my opinion, they did a whole lot better as an overall product. But yes, I do believe the final attack on Fuscus is just taking the piss, who thought covering four fifths of the screen with blinding light was a good idea for a final climax. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that, thank you very much for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed this little dive into my thoughts on the over-reliance on VFX, as some people call it. But always keep in mind that I just approach these things as a viewer, as I, as I watch them, as a normal audience member who has no actual qualification, so to speak, within the actual work itself. And also, I am also someone who does not really approach things as a fan of a specific staff member. And as I said, while Waki's work is marvelous, it did always irk me the wrong way that it was used as a crutch for the entire Elicization season. I mainly used Kizu's tweets in this video and the tweets they quoted because they were the most noticeable criticism that appeared in my timeline. But you should remember that aside from personal opinions or being fan of staff members, Kizu does actually work in the industry and on the technical side of things has a lot more knowledge that I simply don't have looking from the outside. You know, <laughs> not like I'm a I'm trying to sweep under the rug that Scherzo movie had production issues where Ayako Kono was tweeting about how terrible of a time they were having so close to release, which eventually led to the delay, etc. So yeah, I'm just a guy who likes observing things and sharing how I see them as a normal audience member in this case. And that's how I personally perceive the usage of VFX as a viewer over the years in the SAO series. What annoys me and my eyes and what does not. If you enjoyed, a like or a comment is always appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks to my patrons and channel members as always. Don't forget the Platinum Collector's Edition Sword Online by Yampress. Link is in the description as well. Don't miss out that huge discount. And as always, stay cool.